This module covers the topic of writing a narrative review. To begin, what is a narrative review? Reviews look at the literature and try to synthesize the information out there on a particular topic to answer a question or focus on a clinical area. They can be systematic or narrative. As implicated by the name, systematic reviews are very detailed that try to get all the literature on a particular topic. So when you're writing up a systematic review, you have a very detailed methodology that you use to try to find all of the research on that topic. They can be qualitative, which just reviews all the literature, or quantitative, which is also known as a meta-analysis, where not only do you evaluate each paper, but you combine the statistical analysis in each one and do an overall analysis. This provides the highest level of evidence when a meta-analysis is done on randomized controlled trials. Narrative reviews are not as rigorous as systematic reviews. They can be editorials, which are usually a focus review by an invited expert that the journal reaches out to, a commentary, which is just an opinion from an expert, or a narrative overview, which is a comprehensive synthesis of the published literature, but not as rigorous as a systematic review. If you're thinking of writing a narrative review, first you want to make sure to read up on the topic and the specialty of interest. You've got to find a gap in the literature. The worst thing you can do is spend a lot of time doing a review only to find out no one cares and no one wants to publish it because it's not needed in the literature. So you've got to find that gap, a topic that has a lot of information in the literature, but no one has really put everything together yet to describe things relative to all the different publications out there. Sometimes a review may already exist, but maybe it's from years ago and there's a lot of new information that can be updated on the topic. In that case, you don't want to stop considering a review just because one exists, but you just look at what you can add to the literature compared to that last review. Kind of ask yourself the question, since that review, what am I adding to the literature? Talk to your mentor to make sure it's a good topic before you delve into it and do a lot of work. And then one of the themes you're going to see throughout this presentation is to make sure that you check with the author guidelines for your target journal to make sure that you're working within their constraints and guidelines. So some journals may prefer a research letter, which means you're going to have a lot lower word count and reference limits, but it may be what they prefer for your type of review. So as I said, you really want to make sure that you're going to be adding something to the literature. Don't waste your time writing a review if it's not going to get accepted anywhere. Before you start writing, really look into the literature and do a thorough review. Again, ask yourself that question, what will a review on this topic add to the literature that people can't already get just from reading these articles? As you're doing your literature review, you're building your bibliography. You're keeping track of each article you read, keep taking notes for yourself about what their findings were and, and considering how that might go into your, your review overall. It can help to use a reference manager, and there are a couple free options listed there, Zotero or Mendeley. Um, and you want to make sure you have your citation correct um, format, which is the AMA citation format. Um, so you can look up a little bit more on that to make sure you're doing it correctly. And you can always look at published articles too to kind of get used to the format. And then it's good at the beginning to have a target journal in mind because you'll want to check those author guidelines before you get started. That may not be the journal that you end up publishing in if they reject it and you kind of shop it around. And then you just adjust your article or your manuscript based on the guidelines for your new target journal. What are the components of a narrative review? Title, maybe an abstract, an intro, methods, results, discussion, maybe a conclusion, and your references. Again, check those author guidelines. So the title, you want to be concise and informative. Make sure you kind of include the relevant topic in the title. You don't want to necessarily use redundant words such as a narrative review or review of the literature, except if the journal requires it. Some journals do require you re include the type of review in the title for the review. And then you don't want to make yourself sound better than you are by saying this is a unique review, a novel review. Don't try to sell it that hard. It tends to just rub reviewers the wrong way and make you think you're, you're trying to pull something over on them. The journal may require a title page in addition, which usually they outline exactly what they want. It might be a word count, financial disclosure statements, conflict of interest, author uh, affiliations. So again, you're going to check those guidelines. 
The abstract is a really short summary. So if you think about when you're about to look at a review, the first thing you look at for any manuscript really that you're about to read is the abstract because that kind of tells you what it's all about. So you want to write your abstract last because that way you're going to have the whole review done and you're going to really know what the key points are that you want to include. They're usually pretty short. You want to make sure you state the clinical question that you're answering or the objective of the review and then some essential information so people can easily retrieve it from things like PubMed. So the disease you're studying, the outcome you're looking at so that it'll pop up when people search for it. The journal may require it to be structured and have the same sections that the overall review manuscript does like background, objective, results, or it can be unstructured where it's just a little paragraph that summarizes. And then they may also ask for keywords. And again, this helps people when they're searching for to look up topics through things like uh, databases like PubMed. In your intro, you're going to want to be concise and get their attention. You want the background information on the subject, kind of a focused but thorough literature review. Don't make it too long. Um, you want to define the disease or the subject you're looking at, what's the current guidelines or the current literature, and what the gaps are. And then you kind of want to tell readers why it's worth reading or for reviewers why it's worth publishing this review. What's unique about it? What are you adding to the literature? And then the last sentence, you just kind of want to briefly explain what it's about. We present a review of this medication for this disease or this for that. Um, and then again, check the requirements for the length of the intro. In your method section, you're going to talk about the search strategy you use. So usually the method section is how you conducted a study. For reviews, it's how you went about searching the literature. So what were your inclusion and exclusion criteria for articles for you to decide what you would include? What databases did you search? What were the search terms? What was the range of dates that you searched the literature? What was the date you actually conducted your search? Because that way people know the date your search was conducted and then if literature comes out afterward, they know that it's since your review. Um, and then there's a little example at the top of a little tracking log table that you can sort of use to keep track of these things. In the results section, you're again going to talk about your search strategy and your search outcomes. So you're going to mention the articles you selected, what type of article were there, how many of each. You might talk about the ones that you rejected and why. You know, where, Was it when we did a title and abstract search, we rejected this many. Um, you might describe the articles and their conclusions. So what did they actually find? This study assessed the efficacy of different antibiotics in treating nodulocystic acne and found that sericycline was the highest uh, efficacy. And then the relevance. So this is where you're talking about why it matters that you included these ones. Um, you may include paragraphs, tables, flowcharts or diagrams or graphs. You want to be really clear and concise with your results and really what the people are looking for. What is, if the question you're asking needs to be outlined really clearly in the results and really concisely, that's where things like a table can be helpful. So here's an example of a table that sort of summarizes things, the type of study, the antibiotic they assess, the sample size, the demographics, the duration, the conclusions. It would also be a good idea to have in there uh, what was their outcome measure that they used, you know, what was the score they used to show improvement, and how, how much did each of these show it. Um, really the key information that people are going to want. And this is where your mentor can be particularly helpful because with our more experienced reading articles and going to the literature to find answers, we're going to know what we're looking for and say, all right, they're going to really want this table to include X, Y, Z. The discussion is the most important section, as always. A lot of times people will just read the abstract and then skip to the discussion of a paper. So you want to make sure all your key information is in the discussion. You want to summarize the key findings and most importantly, interpret them. No one cares about a review that only regurgitates information that they could find just by reading all of those articles. They want you to put things together, synthesize the information, and then present something new. This is where your review presents something new to the literature, and if it doesn't, it's not going to be accepted. So you really want to make sure that you hypothesize, interpret the information, talk about why it's significant, what you are re adding by taking these bits of information and putting them all together. And then again, that's where you want to emphasize the importance. If there's a previous review, talk about how yours is different and clinically significant. So if you're updating the literature, you're really going to focus on the new things that you're adding to it and why that's important and why that makes a difference. If you 
continue to review, but the findings are basically the same as the last review, there's no point in doing it. So you want to draw those conclusions and then also mention the limitations and why those matter. Journals may or may not ask for a conclusion statement, so check those author guidelines to see. The conclusion statement is a really the key takeaways, very concise statement of the clinical question that was addressed and how you addressed it. It's a, just a few sentences in one little paragraph and really the key take-home message. Again, this is if there is a conclusion, this might be the thing people even read before the discussion to see, all right, what were the, th what were the key points of this article and why should I care about it? Your references, you want to make sure that you stay organized when you're writing a review because you may end up with dozens of references, maybe even hundreds. So you got to stay organized because you want to cite them in the order they appear in your manuscript and number them that way. You want to make sure they have the proper format. You want to make sure you're referencing actual journal articles and not things like websites or textbooks unless you absolutely have to because it's not available elsewhere. If you read a review, another review article on a subject, if there is information in that review article that came from another article that they cited, you don't cite the review article. You go to that original source and you're going to cite it because that's the source of the information. If you're citing a review because it's something that they added to the literature, you know, when they synthesized their information and they drew this conclusion, then and only then do you cite that review article. Review articles really shouldn't be cited very often. And then you want to check your target journal author guidelines for limits on the number of references because that may restrict what you can cover as a topic. Um, sometimes if you feel like it's a really important review, you can reach out to the editors and ask them if they would allow an increase in the number of references. So that's a brief overview of how to write a narrative review article. Thanks so much, and we are always looking to improve these modules and value your feedback, so please use this QR code to provide any feedback you have for us to make these modules even better.